Hi everybody, this is part two in what to consider when pricing your alterations. I wanna tell you what I found, but I also wanna give you some tips. At the end of the video, I'll give examples of how I ripped myself off, not once, but twice, around the same situation, due to bad decision making on my part, and I have never made this mistake again. And then we'll end with some words of encouragement, and I have some recommendations that'll help you. Now, I did a Google search and people basically did it the same. Calculate how much money is going out, how much money you need to come in, base that on an hourly rate, depending on how many hours you wanna work, and then decide um, how much an alteration, how much time an alteration is going to take. Now, don't forget to add in the time you're talking to your customer and your fittings, or if you have to go to the store for something, take all this into consideration. After all that, let's say you need to make $30 an hour. If you do an alteration that takes 20 minutes, you charge $10 for that alteration. If you have an item that takes 30 minutes, then you charge $15 for that item. So it's pretty basic, but I wonder if something else is going on here because any of us could have done this search and gotten the same information. I hear this a lot. People are afraid to charge. And then I did a search in my area and there is a particular alteration shop that is just getting so many bad reviews because they go way over. They're just charging ridiculous amounts. And so I caution you about that too. Um, you don't want to go too far out of the range of what's going on in your particular area. So with all this concern about charging too much or not enough for your alterations, I have to wonder if maybe our mindset about money plays into how we feel about charging money. For instance, if you have always struggled with money, maybe you don't want to charge what your skill level is worth because you're thinking, but I, I could never pay this much money for an alteration. Well, no, because you struggled, but not everybody that comes to you has the same experience with money. So when we charge for money and we get that cringe factor, try not to put that on some someone else because that may not be their experience with money. In the past, years and years ago, probably 20 years ago, um, I actually had a customer tell me I need to raise my, raise my prices. So she felt like my work was really good and I wasn't charging enough. And that is something to remember, especially when you're good. And now I'm going to tell you, I feel like I'm good. I don't, I, I, I don't want it to come across like I'm just like so the best or whatever, but I put time into my skill. And after I took my fashion design and my fine dressmaking classes, I would go home with my strips of fabric and I would practice, practice my stitches, watch TV. And I'm practicing and practicing, grab three threads, grab three threads, you know, all the different stitches. I practice. So you need to practice. And the more you practice, the better you get, the more you can charge for your alterations. Even though your skill levels level is going to get better, it's not necessarily guaranteed that you will lose that cringe when you charge someone for an alteration, but it's something you are going to have to sit with. Do your calculations set your prices and don't budge for anyone unless it's family. I, you make that decision. I sew for free for family. Not all my family will take it for free. They, they usually give me money and the only people that I am most certain will take advantage of me is my seven year old grandson and my eight year old granddaughter but I'm more than happy to be taken advantage of by them. They are like little fashion plates. They are so adorable. And I sew anything from underwear to like stuffed animal eyes that came off or whatever. And grandma, can you fix my glove? The seam opened up. So yeah, the little ones will do it. But always, I always do my best even for them. And you should too, because every time you sew and you do your very best, your skill just gets better and then that's going to work out better for you and your business. You are going to get a customer that says, you charge way too much. And what you need to do is have on hand a 
phone number and a name of a nearby dry, uh, dry cleaners or someone um, that they can take their, their stuff to. Be kind. Oh, you know what? These are good dry cleaners. I would take them there. They can help you and let it go. Don't, don't give in. I know because you, you want to give everybody the best deal and, and you want to please everybody and you're afraid you're going to lose that job. Don't worry about it because when you bypass those customers and you're building your skill, you will naturally draw a different clientele. One who is very concerned about how the alterations look and they will be happy to pay you for it. But make sure that your skills are up to it. Speaking of having your skills up to it, these are my tips. Always do your best, no matter who you're sewing for. If it's your mom and dad, if it's your own clothes, or if it's for your kids, Always do your best, always, always, always. By increasing your skills, it will enable you to be able to charge more for your alterations. And I, by more, I'm not saying go way above and beyond everybody else, but definitely the higher end of the range. And have a quick turnaround. My turnaround is one week because I don't have a lot of alterations. Now you make your adjustment according to what your workflow is. Get your customer stuff back to them in a timely manner. Next is communication. Communication, when it's done right, is amazing. It's, it smooths so many things out. I, I strive for good communication in every relationship I have. You guys need to really um, hone in on communication. If something comes up, whether you're done early with the alteration or you're going to be a little late, send a text. Hey, I just want to let you know this came up and it might take you a couple more days. And usually that right there, oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, unless they had a hard deadline and they told you ahead of time. Um, if you're done early and me, I don't like stuff sitting around my house. If I'm done, I want it gone. So you know what? I told you a week, but it's been two days. Um, I'm finished you can come pick it up or I can take it to you, whatever. It is important that your customer is satisfied because your customer's satisfaction is your key to success. Because when they have a good experience with you, their word of mouth is the best advertisement you can get. Because it's one thing to see an advertisement on, on TV or online, but when someone that you know tells you this was my experience and they can tell them about you, it, it, it works better. It's just so much better. For example, I returned a drapery job that I just finished and the lady told me, I picked it up like December 21st, I think. And she said, don't worry about getting it back before Christmas or the new year. You can wait till the middle of January. So I said, okay. So I was grateful for that time because, you know, holidays are hectic. And so I texted her a few days ago and I said, um, I'm almost finished with your drapes. I will call you in a couple of days to set up a time that I can return them to you. And she said, that's great. And so when I was finished, I texted her and said, hey, I'm finished. What time do you want me to come? Tomorrow or the next day? Oh, the next day. Set a time. I was there and I helped her hang them up because I wanted to see if I accomplished my goal. When I do drapes, I want them to skim the carpet without dragging and where the drapes don't buckle because they're resting on the carpet. It was exactly what I wanted. Not every job turns out exactly the way I want, but this one did and I was so grateful. And she looked at him, she goes, these are perfect and those are golden words for me. I love when people say they're perfect. Fully understanding, nothing's really perfect. But they were happy and I was happy. So that was a satisfying feeling. And then she said, if I need anything else, I'm definitely calling you. So then I told her, if you know of anybody else who needs anything done, feel free to give them a number and have them text me. Now, the things I think about when calculating your stuff and trying to decide, Okay, so what if you're not the main earner and you just want this as a, either something to do or you want this um, as just a side job um, or to bring a little extra money to maybe 
put in savings and your needs don't require you to pay to charge $15 for a pair of pants or you know $10 for darts please don't lower your prices always what if your if your needs don't demand that much don't lower your prices just stay competitive with the seamstresses around you because if you drop them too low and you get a lot of customers, you're going to be, you're going to be disappointed. You're going to have a lot of work and you're going to feel like you're not making much money. And even though you're not in it for the money, it can kind of feel like being taken advantage of, but you set the price and then you're kind of undercutting the seamstresses in the area. And I just don't think it's a really good practice. I think you, they all need to be kind of in the same area, you know? So keep that in mind. And if you want to raise your prices, think customer service. Customer service, you know, you hear it a lot and I've heard it a lot and I never, oh my gosh, I wanna do a video on the little shop in South Carolina where I learned specifically men's alterations because I have never seen customer service like this ever. And so they are great people. They're so kind. They're just, oh, it, it's a little shop and they, and they, they do sports, sport celebrities. They work with, uh, politicians. I mean, this little tiny shop tucked away in a quaint little street in South Carolina services these people and they even they even have customers in other countries where they send them to them and when i do the video i'll go more in depth on their customer service and i have never seen such loyal lifelong loyal customers as this now what if your workload doesn't quite pay your bills at the price you're charging should you raise your prices i'm going to say if your skills allow it and be real about your skills. Don't just say, oh yeah, I'm the best. Are you really? I mean, do you practice? And do you have someone bounce off of someone? What, what, is, what, is, what does it look like when they do it? Because I used to work in another alteration shop and I don't think I'm the best because I who's, who's the best? But I looked at this one lady and I was like, I cannot believe she's been working here for so long because her work is not good. I mean, it was just lumps and bumps and knots, tons of knots. I was, <laughs> there was so many knots and it was like thick thread. And so make sure your work is up to it you know, practice, be proud of your work, you know, take pride in your work. This is a skill that not everybody has. And if you have it and you like it, why not shoot for like improvement all the time? I talked about sewing for friends and family, you know, and my grandkids, but when you're sewing for friends, please be cautious. Um, I would not, I used to give friends discount. I do not do friends discounts anymore. Um, when you cut prices or you sew for free or you trade your work, I made that mistake. Um, it's a slippery slope. Just keep your emotions out of it. This is business. You have your price list, stick to it and, and swallow the cringe feeling. I know the cringe feeling, I do. Okay, this is my example of how I ripped myself off because I was felt bad for someone. Okay, so in case the person I'm talking about sees this video, I've not told anybody who actually knows you. I'm not mentioning any names. And um, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. So I have a friend whose daughter was getting married and they took the dress to an, a bridal shop and had alterations done on it. And they spent hundreds of dollars on the alteration. A little later, she came back and was talking about how frustrated she was because um, she didn't get this right and that right. And she did this and it, it just, she goes, it, it's, it's not working. 
she paid her again to redo it and it just wasn't working. So after all this mess, she came to me like, can you do it? So, um, it took a while, but what took the most time was the communication. And this is what I was talking about. Um, the bride did not have the words to explain what she wanted. So we just kept going back and forth. She kept saying, I want a mermaid style. So I would do the mermaid, but I, I want it a little tighter. So I make it tighter and, and I don't cut anything off until I know this is exactly what she wants. So we, we did this and did this and did this. And she's like, this is not it. And so we sat down, look at pictures. What, what is it you're wanting? And I finally got it. And I did the alterations from top to bottom. I just basically changed everything. And she's like, I love it. This is perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. Now, the deal I made with her was because her mom paid all that money I, and I felt bad for my friend, I told the bride, I said, look, I'll do your alterations if you and your fiance, they were like bodybuilders or whatever, just write down some exercises that I can do because I wanted to start working out, but if I have to sit there and think about okay, how many of these do I do? And what is this? If I have to learn everything and then figure everything out, I'm just not going to do it. So I want to just lay it out for me. To me, I felt like it would be worth it. Okay. So I would have some information from some professionals to do this. And it's been almost two years and she has not paid. She has not delivered on that. So I was just like, whatever, you know, I mean, I can't, I can't go back and I'm not going to badger her about it. I knew better than to make an offer like this because I know humanity. I know what human nature is and, and how that works. I mean, when I do alterations, um, I don't like to get paid until I'm done because if you give me my reward before I finish the work, the reward's gone. If, you know what I mean? You have to make sure, oh, I've got to stay on top of this because I already got the money. <laughs> so it's just human nature, I think. Um, second time is I was trying to promote my alterations business and I wanted to hit the areas in my, around my neighborhood. And the next girl was a bridesmaids and I, she was a graphic designer. And I said, Hey, look, if you will design this trifold flyer for me, here's the information, my testimonials and all that. Um, I'll do your alterations and she, for you know just a trade, she was, Oh, all right, that'll be great. So I did the alterations. I sent her all the information, my logo, my information, the testimonials, whatever, nothing came back later. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I was just so busy, but you know, do you have the information? Yeah, here it is. I sent it again. And then she sent me, I think one more time. I'm sorry. I didn't get it done and left it. And I go, Oh, here's the information. I sent it again, you know, almost two years, still nothing. Am I disappointed? Yes. Um, am I mad? No, I feel like I feel like life just has a way, um, if I had built my business, if, if I had put that out there and started to grow, it might've been harder for me to move across the country, whatever. So that's where we're at. Now going back to tracking your time, tracking your time. If I could just hire someone to do all the thinking about that stuff, I would be so happy. Um, you know, set the timer. How long does it take you to do? to hem these pants or taking the waist. It's like a pain that I don't want to deal with. So I found an app and it's called hours tracker hours and pay. There are 36,000 reviews with a five star rating. So I will write that down in the description box. If I could put a link, I will. If not, I'll just write it down there and you guys can look it up. But basically you go into the app and you put in uh, how much you want to charge per hour. And if I remember right, cause I had taken it off for a while, but when I stopped doing alterations, um, and I think it's a free app, but I thought when I had it, there was an option to purchase a larger, you know, cause I think I can only put three in at a time and then it'll calculate everything for you when you're done. So I have my phones open right here, hit start. I start working. 
Um, if I stop for lunch, stop. You know, check out. Go eat lunch. Go to the store. Do whatever. Come back. Get to work. Start. Keep going. When you're done, stop. It'll calculate everything. And then based on how much you are charging per hour, it will tell you how much to charge. Super duper cool. So with that, I hope you guys found value in this video. If you have any comments, any suggestions, anything to add to what I was saying, leave a comment in the comment box and see you in the next